Welcome back and thank you for keeping it KTN News and KTM Farmers TV. Uh, today we are coming to you live from Nyandarwa County um, and today we are, it's the National Potato Day and uh, with me is a distinguished uh, guest of panel who have been uh, helping us unpack this conversation on the potato for us to understand uh, why this crop is very important for us as a country. Um, Beatrice, maybe I come back to you. Um, you talked about the regulations and uh, that the demand for the regulation came from, from the stakeholders, even the farmers. Um, one thing that I, 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 I've been following on when it comes to the Irish potato is that the farmers were happy with a 50 kilogram bag, but they were not happy with uh, the registration. How, did that, uh, how, how do you think those regulations were received from the directorate? Thank you for that good question. And um, um, I would like to inform the viewers that um, the bit of registration was misinterpreted by some bloggers. And uh, we came strongly on board as a directorate to demystify what was going on in social media, that from today you will need a license to grow potatoes. From today, you will not sell your potatoes as a farmer until you are licensed by AFA. That was wrong information to the public, Keitani. But together with our stakeholders, we teamed up and we put it straight that the regulations are anchored on the Crops Act. That is our mother act which we are enforcing and implementing as AFA. When you go to the Crops Act, it requires that farmers of the organized commodities register with their cooperative societies. Like for example, in the case of coffee, they will register with the cooperative societies for coffee. Mm -hmm. But when it came to food, small scale farmers it says may, so it's not mandatory may register with an association. So there's freedom of registration. We are not really compelling farmers to register. We are giving them freedom to make a choice to register with associations. And for, those, for the large-scale farmers, the law requires that they register with AFA. Why are we requiring farmers to register with associations? We all know that our farmers practice the potato farming in small, small, small holder farms. And if we join together in associations, we can then mop up this produce for purposes of market linkages. For example, you might need a processor who needs some tonnage of potatoes supplied on a weekly basis. And if you are alone as a farmer and you are producing six bags, then it becomes difficult to link you to markets. To, to market. So these, are, these regulations compel farmers that they register with associations for purposes of supporting them. When you are in associations, it is even easier to give incentives. It is easier to build capacity because then when you train a group of farmers, the information is spread wider than targeting one, one grower. Registration, also, the associations need to deposit the register with the county government. We all know that agriculture, a big part of agriculture initiatives are devolved to the county government. So, as a government, we need to know who our farmers are. When we sit and plan that we need to develop these volumes of seed, we need to do it from an informed point of view. Who are these farmers that we are targeting, for example, in matters of seed? seed? Who are these farmers that, for example, when we have a development partner who wants to invest in the potato value chain, who are these farmers that then we can link this development partner to them? So the regulations require that 
the county government has a register for all its growers. And because county government and national government, we work together, and then as national government, we will get the register from the county government, which will inform also policy decisions. Thank you. Okay. Let me go to uh, Mr. Kagwango a little bit. Just touch on a little bit of, of, of the new regulations. What did you think as the National Potato Council? Thank you. Um, as uh, Madam Beatriz has said, the regulations were demand driven. Um, uh, we started uh, pushing for these regulations. As I told you, National Potato Council uh, tries to uh, bring people together to solve the problems that are there. One of the problems has been farmers selling potato with extended bags, which means they are normally exploited. Um, poor places, a lot of potato packed in one bag, plus other issues of that big bag include uh, uh, wastage and spoilage because the big bag, um, uh, the handlers, because it's heavy, they are not able to help with gentry. They drop drug, which means they get spoiled and sugar start changing, uh, which means they are not good for processing. And these are some of the reasons why you could find um, some of the uh, franchise uh, importing uh, uh, red card chips because of some of these dynamics. And um, uh, the fact that um, uh, we didn't know how much, because the, 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 the bags are different from one county to another, from one season to another, so even the county, county cannot have good data. So we, we actually uh, uh, requested and um, uh, we worked with the county, uh, all the counties. There was public participation as required by the constitution, and all the stakeholders were involved. Now, that bit of registration has been, um, uh, 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 people have been, have been misread by uh, some of the traders uh, pretending to be farmers, just propaganda. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, farmers, according to the regulation, they say farmers may register, but they can register with the, 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 the associations. And we encourage, we're actually encouraging them because, uh, as Madam uh, Beatrice is saying, how do you plan for interventions? For example, right now we have an um, uh, uh, e-voucher system going on because now uh, we were able to lobby, the government accepted to include other crops like potatoes in the e-voucher where fertilizer is subsidized, seed are subsidized. How do you know how many farmers are planting potato where? So these are important for us to be able to guide the, the, the interventions. And um, um, those, those who are misinterpreting, sending um, uh, propaganda, they are just trying to fight so that uh, these are people who have been enjoying the status quo, uh, uh, that confusion. And um, we need to create awareness. We have been doing that, creating awareness, having forums and all this. And um, uh, any time we have opportunity, we are trying to uh, enlighten. It has many, many more uh, components, including uh, correction centers, including um, uh, marketing together. Uh, so the propagandists are just picking some areas and uh, twisting them just to make sure that uh, there is that confusion. All right. Yeah. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Kagunga. Let me go to Nyongesa because he's, he's also a, an important player when it comes to to the pot, uh, to, 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 to the potato. Um, as Caldro, what uh, do, do you think about these uh, regulations, how they were received before we come to the county government? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Philip. Um, there is a history to these regulations, by the way. Um, talking about the 2019 regulations alone uh, might get us through sight of where we have come from. And uh, the resistance that we see now has been persistent from uh, the first initiatives. We mentioned the early ones of uh, around 20, 20, 2014, and before that there was another initiative in 2003. Mm -hmm. So consistently we have seen, because of entrenched interests, uh, basically people not wanting majority to benefit from what the policy is trying to, to, to develop, to create an environment where all players uh, benefit from this uh, vibrant uh, uh, industry. 
So for us, and by the way, these uh, stakeholder uh, meetings uh, to, 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 to get the, 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 the stakeholders to, to ventilate on the proposed uh, regulations, there were two events, uh, meetings, both which were hosted by, by our CARO headquarters in Loretto, uh, together with the partners who are here and uh, others who are not. So we, we have been particularly interested in having to see that this industry grows. And one way of doing this is to ensure that we support uh, these new regulations to ensure that they, 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 they take root uh, to benefit not only the farmers, but also other stakeholders uh, who have a, an, an interest in the, in the potato industry. Uh, so uh, we have been working the, this journey. And uh, 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 this time, I think, uh, looking at uh, all the indications are that all the elements are coming together to ensure that the farmer particularly uh, benefits uh, from these new regulations. Okay, thank you very much. Let me go back to Beatrice a little bit. Uh, Beatrice, on the same regulations, uh, I think also while this misinformation going around is maybe uh, the farmers have not seen the regulations themselves or it is in a language that uh, it is not easy for them to, to unpack and understand, what is... Um, maybe should be done to ensure that even the farmers get uh, to read and understand the regulations uh, themselves? That's a good question. Okay, Tony. I do agree that um, matters of law may be Matters of law may be complicated, and uh, where we are coming from, an unregulated sector, and then it requires a lot of sensitization, a lot of training of various value chain actors. The regulations were gazetted in April 2019. After that, we carried, together with county governments, they were launched nearly in the 16 potato growing counties because the farmers were the greatest beneficiaries. So quickly, we launched these regulations together with county governments. And um, sensitization has been continuous. I, however, agree that there is need to unpack the regulations into a, a more understanding language, especially for the growers. And as a directorate, we have developed uh, documents, although they're in English, but these documents have unbundled each and every of those regulations you see. We have what we call an implementation guide. This is a document to the stakeholders, which we give out to the stakeholders. When you go to that implementation guide, it tells the farmer what the regulations required him to do and what he'll benefit from that regulation. And then it goes to transporters, and then it goes to the warehouse operators, the storage men, all the way to processors. That we have unbundled. And this is where we call upon the development partners also to come on board and support, disseminate these regulations and these tools that government has developed even in matters of even uh, interpreting them in, uh, in, in vernacular and also supporting the initiative to go even to the radio programs so that our farmers also get uh, to understand what is in these regulations. We have also been supported by um, SNV to develop small handbooks that have been distributed to the counties which have also unpacked those regulations. Alongside this, sensitization and capacity building is continuous. So we are going to have joint programs with county governments where we are going to talk about the regulations today, tomorrow, and even in future until it sinks. Coming from, since independence, changing that culture requires also effort. And that is where we are. We are jointly working with um, our stakeholders and also our partners like uh, NPCK to do a lot of sensitization. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for our viewers uh, back at home, we've also been honored by um, the county governor of uh, Nyandarwa, Francis Kimemia. Welcome Asante. to the show. Asante. Uh, Asante. Um, 
In the meantime, as I uh, give uh, the governor a little bit of time to, to get ready, I will go mm. to dinner and we will talk about a little bit of marketing. Marketing has also been a very big issue when it comes to potatoes. Um, I don't know what uh, the International Potato Center, especially when it comes to marketing and, uh, and value addition. Okay, thank you very much. I think currently, and uh, probably things should change very soon, is that uh, potatoes is marketed individually here in Kenya. So you find farmers, just as Petrus has said, smallholder farmers just are trying to market their potatoes on their own, and uh, it is not structured. And the idea that SIP uh, and other partners, we partner a lot with National Potato Council and Carlo and the counties, is to organize and structure this marketing. And one of the ways to do this structured marketing is to have farmer producer organization. Farmer producer organization just means one voice. So if we have uh, Nyandarwa Potato Association or Farmer Cooperative Society or just Farmer Producer Organization, and we have all the other counties, they can come and form into a union, and so they have one voice. So the one voice would cut across from Taita all the way to uh, all the other counties, you know, in uh, um, Mount Elgon through Nyandaru and the other counties, and they have one voice. And this one voice is that potato, this one voice is that the farmers understand the cost of production. And so they can be able to bargain knowing that we cannot sell at this lower price because then we are not even breaking even. Okay. Now, this farm organization can also lead uh, aggregation centers. So then uh, our potatoes can be brought together. This farm organization can also bring in the issue on standard. I think one of the challenges that we have uh, in Kenya, we have the production is low, but also the quality is low. Mm -hmm. And I think as the National Potato Council uh, CEC, uh, CEO has said, sometimes you find the high-end uh, restaurants are actually uh, um, bringing in potatoes from outside simply because we are not meeting their quality. And so using this farmer producer organization, they can bring in the issue on um, standardization or sorting and creating. And one of the things that we look at farmer producer organization doing is probably incentives to be able to incentivize farmers that are able to bring quality potatoes for a, a direct market. The other thing that farmer producer organization can do is introduce either contract farming or direct market. They can be able to help in terms of um, uh, having direct access to the market, whether it's for processors or for high-end hotels or for even outside the country. We have the potential to be able to um, take potatoes outside the country. We do get from Tanzania, and it's also an opportunity to, uh, um, because we have a huge potential. Another thing that farmer producer organization is capacity. You find that when partners come and they want to train, it's easy to actually go through farmer producer organization because then there is a union, the Apex Union, and probably the farmer producer, and they have the branches. So you can be able to disseminate whether it is information or whether you are also supporting finances because because then a farmer producer can also be the collateral when it comes to uh, looking for finances. So there's a lot of uh, benefits when you form a farmer producer organization because then you have a higher bargaining uh, power to be able to bargain about your produce. Now coming to, um, to the value addition. We do produce, as you said uh, in your introduction, we produce about three metric tons or two to three metric tons per year. We do consume fresh most of it. And currently, we are only processing in the country, I think it's less than 10%. In some countries, they do about 50%. Why? Because potatoes is very perishable, so you cannot keep it for long. So it, there is need for value addition to be able to increase the shelf life, to be able to have it... Um, Imagine potatoes, sometimes you can't take it to north, northern parts of the country because it's very perishable. But if there was value addition, then it's possible to take even to school children and be able, we know that there's a problem with drought in those parts of the country. So potato can be uh, value added to many products. Right. We have two main products, either the food or the, the industrial, so it can be also the feed uh, for the animals. For your information, even the, what you peel uh, from potatoes can be used for feed. Um, the potatoes can be 
um, used to actually produce starch for the industry. In fact, the other day we were talking with uh, Mr. Washira and saying it's high time. But then we are saying before we reach the industrial products, the non-food, first of all, we need to concentrate on the food because we need to feed uh, our population. We need to feed ourselves. And so we are talking about value addition, and value addition starts from the farm. All right. right from the time of planting the seed, right from the and all the way, because if you don't follow the best practices, then you cannot get a good produce at the end. So you are adding the value along the chain. Now, once it's produced, one of the things that um, part of the value addition is also just sorting and creating so that you are able to do, uh, you are able to uh, market uh, differently. Now, it can be uh, value added in terms of processing. Right now, most of uh, what you are doing is fish, um, chips, and, and crisps. But we can go into the other, like dehydrated products or um, frozen chips that can be done. And this can be done by the youth. It, they can do it at their farm. They can be able to be supported to do that, and they just deliver to the cities or they deliver to the market. So it can be frozen cheap. There are many other ways that can be done. And this is an area that we need to exploit so that we increase that shelf life. Not to forget the issue on storage, right. the cold storage. The storage so that then potatoes can be able to be released based on the demand. Because sometimes we release so much potatoes uh, because we are based on the rainy season and we just release. But if we can be able to hold it in a cold storage, if we can be able to store them, then even one month, one two weeks can make a difference in terms of the marketing. So okay. those are the areas right. that we are trying to look into at International Potato Center in partnership with the partners that we are here today. OK, thank, thank you, you very much, uh, Dr. Dina. Um, Maybe now I can bring uh, in the governor uh, and tell us a little bit what Nyandarwa County is doing when it comes to uh, helping their farmers also market uh, their potatoes. But uh, even as, as you talk about marketing, um, uh, Governor, maybe you can t touch a little bit about uh, the new regulations, especially uh, the 50 kilogram bag. How was it received by your county and uh, by your farmers and what is the county doing to also ensure that uh, farmers uh, really understand uh, those regulations uh, properly? Uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. Uh, the regulations in terms of uh, getting rid of the so-called Katanyoka Bilasum. We used to have a big bag, you know, the tall bag, uh, or twice, twice our sizes. It, it, was, it was known as Katanyoka Bilasumu. And we campaigned against it. Uh, we, 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 we requested the Minister of uh, Agriculture, the National Minister, and the AG and the president himself to support the 13 potato growing counties to get rid of that bag and bring in the 50 kilogram program bag. And the 50 kilogram bag was taken very well by, by, by the farmers. A lot of uh, stakeholder meetings were, you know, were held. Uh, we had 350 stakeholders who participated in the, in the, in the public participation. Uh, the, the issue, one of the challenges has been if Nyandara implements the 50 kilogram rule, and Nairobi and maybe Narok or another county doesn't introduce it and continues to bring in the, the Katanyoka Bilasumu, then of course the whole initiative is, is defeated. So there has been that. Uh, we have been coordinating the governors to the potato growing governors to that we all enforce the 50 kilogram rule. But very quickly, maybe I need to also indicate that some other rules came on board uh, requiring that you know the police, the chiefs, uh, the washing of potatoes and so on and so forth. Those ones were not taken very well. One, there was no, uh, there was no participation uh, with the farmers. I also didn't know th about them myself. So we told the farmers to stick to the 50 kilogram rule, mm -hmm. as we deal with other issues of, you know, the the washing and the the police and the chiefs going to inspect the potatoes in the farms. I think there was some propaganda that came in. Some of it was not true, but that the farmers were not very comfortable with, and that could not go uh, very well with the farmers. That is on the, on the, on the 50 kilogram rule. And everybody agrees uh, we need the 50 kilogram rule. I think the challenge is what about the pricing? Uh, does it, you see, uh, in the final analysis, is what you take home. Sure. You, yeah, it's what you take home. What is the price per kilogram? Are farmers getting what they're supposed to get per, per kilogram? Are they putting money in the pocket? I think that is what we should really focus on. In a, in a, in a, in a county that is leading in potato, 550,000 metric tons uh, per year. 13 billion shillings into the county, uh, almost 100,000 farmers, depending on, 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 the, on, the, on the potato industry. 
those are not small that is seven that seven thousand uh, on on, on uh, potato that's not a small amount we lead we are number one in the nation in terms of potato production I mean potato but we are only at 30 percent productivity okay. we, we are number one in the country at 30 percent productivity so you can imagine if even we, we have experiments with the, with the GTZ with the Germans and we're able to produce uh, almost three times what you're currently producing from 30 to 60 uh, per, per hectare uh, tons and that shows you the potential as a food basket for the nation uh, what is possible to do in this county so we are putting as a country we are putting various initiatives uh, we, we, we have already started constructing the potato processing plant in fact they maybe, had the maybe before we go to, to yes. that governor I'm, I'm being told we need to take a short commercial break and yes. then we come back we will okay. go to what now the county is doing to to improve uh, production uh, for our viewers uh, back at home thank you for staying with us uh, we are still talking about the humble potato we are as the governor put it we are in the home of 